Hey, it's Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training, and in this video, I'm gonna share with you seven rapid fire tips that I really think will help you improve your hitting. So let's get started. So the first tip that's really gonna help you out is play to win, don't play not to lose. So in other words, you should be focusing on succeeding in a massive way versus just trying to avoid failure. So as an example, if you walk up to the plate and you tell yourself, I hope I put the ball in play here, that's really a passive and a defensive approach. Instead, you should shift that approach to, I'm gonna attack good pitches, I'm not just gonna put the ball in play, I'm gonna smash the baseball, and I'm gonna make this pitcher pay for leaving a pitch out over the white of the plate. You see that difference, and it's a very subtle difference, but it's gonna make a major difference in your performance at the plate. You can't play just not to lose and play to avoid failure. You have to focus on succeeding in a massive way. You have to play to win. Another example would be walking up to the plate saying, man, I hope I don't strike out here, or I hope I don't hit another rollover to the shortstop. Those are both examples of, again, playing not to lose, trying to just avoid failure. And even worse in that example, you have to remember that your brain does not hear the negative. So when you walk up to the plate and say, I hope I don't strike out, your brain really hears, I hope I strike out. So don't focus on what you want to avoid, focus on what you want to have happen and play to win. Don't go up there, you know, just playing to avoid failure and playing not to lose. Number two, prioritize vision because you can't hit what you can't see. So bat speed, exit velocity, launch angle, getting more separation, having good bat path. These are all things that hitters place a big importance on. And these things are important, but you have to remember none of that matters if you don't see the baseball. We have to simplify hitting and remember the most important thing is we have to get the barrel of the baseball bat on the ball the only way you're gonna be able to ever do that is if you prioritize vision. So a couple quick tips to help you see the ball a little bit better. First of all, be sure that you're going from a soft focus to a hard focus when you're looking out towards the pitcher. Be sure that you pick the baseball up from his window. Another thing is try to minimize your head movement in your load and your strides. This is a common problem that I see with a lot of younger hitters. They just have way too much head movement in their load and their stride. Your head's gonna move a little bit, but you have to remember, we gotta minimize it because the more that your head moves, the more that your eyes are gonna move as well. So minimize that head movement, that'll help you see the ball better. And last thing, don't just watch the baseball until the point of contact. Watch the baseball not only at contact, but after contact. So as you finish your swing, keep your head down in the hitting zone. That's gonna ensure that you're seeing the baseball for as long as possible. The third tip is mirror and adjust for better timing. Mirror and adjust. So what I mean by this is mirror the pitcher. If you were to stand in front of a mirror right now and you were to move your hand this way, obviously you'd see the exact same thing at the exact same time in the mirror, right? Because it's a mirror. Well, when you're trying to get your timing at the plate, whether you're in the on-deck circle or it's before the game, you're watching the pitcher warm up in the bullpen, when you're trying to get your timing down, Use that same approach, mirror him. So whatever he does, you do. So in other words, when he lifts his leg, that's about the same time that you would lift your leg in your swing. That's about the exact same time. When he strides towards you, that's about the exact same time that you should stride towards him. So that's the mirroring part. Then you have to adjust based on whether or not he throws firmer or softer. So a guy that throws harder, you're gonna have to start everything just a little bit sooner. Not quicker, just start things sooner. And then if he throws a little bit softer, then you can afford to start things a little bit later. So you have to mirror, that's gonna get you your basic timing, and then adjust from there uh, based on whether or not he throws a little bit harder or a little bit softer, then you're gonna have absolutely great timing. This next tip is really gonna help you with your bat speed and your power, and that is bombs come from hitting with your big muscles. So you hear it all the time in hitting, hands, 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 knob to the ball. Sometimes I think those things can be overemphasized, just like I think that sometimes focusing on launch angle and exit velocity, those can be overemphasized too if at first you're not prioritizing vision, the same can be applied here. So yes, it's great if you have strong hands and strong wrists and strong forearms, but you have to remember that your biggest and your strongest muscles on your body are your legs, are your butt. That's where a lot of your power is gonna come from. So just take that approach into the weight room. Be sure that you're not neglecting your lower half. You really wanna focus on your legs and your big muscles. That's gonna directly transfer to more power on the field. And then when it comes to actually your swing itself, just be sure that after you load and stride, you're getting into an athletic launch position. So you load, you stride, when your front foot hits the ground, be sure that you're sunk down into your legs so that you can utilize all of that power. Too many times I see hitters who don't get into an athletic launch position, so they're really just throwing their hands at the ball. That's, again, not gonna produce maximum bat speed, maximum power. Remember, bombs come from hitting with your big muscles. 
This next tip is another big one that's really going to help you out. Good hitters learn to use the entire field and hit the ball where it's pitched. So you never want to become one dimensional as a hitter or have any holes in your swing. What I mean by that is if you are strictly a pull hitter, you hit everything to your pull side, that's not really going to allow you to reach your full potential. Just like on the flip side, if you hit everything to the opposite field, again, that's limiting your own potential. What you really want to do, there's a lot of green grass out there, right? You want to use foul line to foul line, and really the pitcher is going to dictate where you hit the ball. That's why, why I talk about hitting the ball where it's pitched. People love to talk about Tony Gwynn, who is one of the greatest hitters to ever walk the face of this earth, and they love to talk about how you know he kept his hands inside the ball, knobbed the ball, and he hit everything to the opposite field. And it's simply not true. Look at his base hit spray charts. He hit the ball absolutely everywhere. And you know what he did? He focused on hitting the ball where it's pitched. So in other words, if the pitcher threw him an inside pitch, yes, he would pull that ball. If it was right over the middle of the plate, he would hit it right back up the middle, gap to gap. If it was on the outer half of the plate, he would hit it to the opposite field. It makes hitting so much easier when you're not trying to manipulate your swing. You're simply letting the pitcher, wherever he throws it, as long as it's a strike, if he throws it in, pull it. Middle, hit it back up the middle, hit it right back up the box, away, hit it that way. But good hitters, they don't just you know hit everything to the opposite field, they don't pull everything, they use the entire field, and really, they hit the baseball where it's pitched. Tip number six, connection at contact, extension after. A lot of hitters, they hear you need to get extension. So what they translate that to in their mind is, well, I need to get my arms extended at the point of contact. And that's not true. That's not going to be your most powerful swing. Your most powerful swing is going to be when everything is connected and in tight to your body at the point of contact. Remember, a connected swing is a powerful swing. The only way that you're really going to be disconnected at the point of contact is if your timing's off. So if you're ridiculously early and you know maybe you've got two strikes and you have to make an adjustment to put the ball in play in order to not strike out, well then yeah, maybe you're, you know, you're out over your front foot because you're so early and maybe your arms will be a little bit more extended, but we don't want that. Assuming you have good timing, you want connection at contact. So connected here, my arms are still bent and then after I hit the ball, after contact, that's when I become disconnected and my arms get extended like this. Connection at contact, extension happens after. So that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. I'd really appreciate that. And subscribe to the channel. That way you never miss any of our upcoming videos. So subscribe, turn your notifications on, and hitters, I put together a free resource for you that I encourage you to download right now. It's 100% free, and I think it's really gonna help you out. It's called the Contact Point Checklist. And what I've done is I've freeze framed the swing at the point of contact, and I've highlighted some key elements that you need to focus on. So do you do these things at the point of contact? I I guarantee it's gonna really help you out. It's 100% free. All you have to do to download that is just click on the link down below in the description. I'll also leave that link in the comment section. So go download that right now. It's free, it's gonna help you out. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time.